Hi, I'm Gary Bowden and welcome to another Zara TV tutorial at ZaraZone.com. This month, I want you to take a look down at your shirt or your pajama top, what you're wearing right now. What do you see, aside from the mustard stain? You see a pattern. From top to bottom, from left to right, it seamlessly tiles. So guess what I'm going to teach you how to do this month? I'm going to teach you how to create a pajama top. I'm kidding. This month I'm going to teach you the steps that you need to know to create a seamless tiling texture using Zara Designer. You'll want to work with the tutorial files this month, so go to zarazone.com forward slash tutorials and go download the zip file. You're probably familiar with Zara's fill gallery and how you can drop an image onto a shape to fill it, but unless the image seamlessly tiles, you're out of luck. This image here might look as though it tiles. The original doesn't need to be on the page after you've imported it. But this fill looks pretty good at 100% scaling. However, if you shrink and rotate the fill, you'll see that this bitmap doesn't line up at its edges. On the other hand, when you build a pattern carefully, and this one took a while, this pattern has no seams, you can see, when it repeats. As you can see here, there's no tiling when I scale and rotate it. Seamless patterns, tiles, are useful in any number of design situations, and I'm going to show you how to build your own. The first thing in Zara you might want to do is to get options on the toolbar, because you'll use the nudge feature and nudge distance all the time when you create a seamless tile. Choose Window, Control Bars, scroll down and check the button palette, and then hold Alt and drag the icon to the toolbar. Click Options now, and on the General tab there's a nudge size. Just because it's a digital magic number, type 512 pixels in the box and close. Now create a rectangle and while it's selected on the info bar type 512 in the height field. Press tab, type 512 and then press tab and this is the base layer for the seamless tile, 512 by 512 pixels. The nudge value is the same as the square's dimensions and that's the real trick in this tutorial. This tutorial has a pizza toppings menu that has a wide border that needs a texture, a pattern of something pizza-ish. Element number one will be a pepperoni slice, round on the bottom, pointy on the top. With the ellipse tool, create a circle. Now make it editable, not edible. Choose Arrange, Convert to Editable Shapes, then choose the Shape tool, or key select the top left and right control points, and click the Make Line button on the info bar. Choose the Fill tool, choose Fractal Clouds from the drop-down list, and then choose a brick red while clicking the central control point, and then a different shade while one of the outer control handles is clicked. This is beginning to look like a pepperoni slice. What it needs now is a greasy reflection. So let's put a glossy shape over it by picking the free hand and brush tool, drawing an irregular shape, fill it with white, and then with the transparency tool, you drag top left to bottom right to create fall off. Then feather the object a little. And now this is a fairly stylized but representational drawing of a pepperoni slice. Now, wherever this drawing appears on the background tile, if it goes off one edge, it has to reappear on the opposite side. I'm going to enhance this group of shapes, uh, you press Ctrl G to group stuff, with a shadow tool. Alright, you select the grouped object, press Ctrl K to duplicate it in place, and then hit your right arrow key. This nudges the duplicate exactly the width of the tile to the opposite side. I'll explain how to trim the exterior at the end of this tutorial. This pizza graphic needs an anchovy. In the Pro version of Zara version 8, you have a shape builder tool. I'm showing here how to make an instant salty fish slice, but you can build the anchovy with any drawing tool. If you use the bevel tool now and pick rounded and move the control handles to the center and adjust the lighting angles, this looks like a dimensional anchovy or an immature worm. Okay, if this element sits on the background without touching an edge, it doesn't have to be duplicated at all. So this is the fate of the anchovy. I'll add a shadow, rotate it a little so all the elements aren't parallel to one another. It's time to create an olive slice now. With the ellipse tool, I create a large and a small circle on top. It's slightly off-center within the large guy. 
Then I'll use Arrange, Combine Shapes, Subtract Shapes, and that's a pretty decent looking olive slice. I'm going to put this in the lower right corner of the tile, and because it overlaps both the bottom and the right, it has to be duplicated top right, top left, and bottom left. So I press Control-K, the up arrow to nudge, Control-K, then the left arrow key, and then nudge down. So this olive slice is going to appear at the edge of both the height and width of the final tile. Finally, I'm using the Shape Builder tool to quickly paint the shape of a mushroom. I paused recording here and chose a circular gradient fill, white at center, light warm gray on the outside, and Zara version 8 retains the last used fill, so it appears that Zara is intuitively filling my mushroom. Uh, it's not. Now I think the mushroom would look better as an extruded shape. I use the extrude tool and rotate the shape a little. The side isn't the right color, so in the color editor I choose local line color and then eyedropper, the right color from the face of the mushroom. And a little drop shadow wouldn't hurt the mushroom. I'll rotate it for the sake of asymmetry, and then I'll put it up top, which means, yep, it needs to reappear at the bottom, reposition it, and some of the other shapes for their final positions within the file, and once we're deliriously happy with the position of the mushroom, Press Control K to copy, and then down arrow key to nudge it down. Once you think you have all the elements the way you want them, is you select everything, and then press Q to create a clip view of the bottom background. It's very important that the dimensions on the info bar are 512 by 512 pixels. It can't say, for example, 512.7 pixels, no fractions. I've duplicated and then nudged the clip view copy over to the right, and although it looks as though there's a groove here, there will not be when you make a bitmap copy and tile it. The visible edge is just the way Zara draws things to screen. What you want to do with your final clip view tile is to press Control shift c to make a bitmap copy, create a true color version, but without an alpha channel in this example. See here that it's 512 by 512 pixels, and this is a bitmap copy. This is our seamless tile for the Pizza Piazza tutorial. You can see that the border here is a little plain, no toppings. So to remedy this, you go back and copy the bitmap tile, paste it into this document, and select the border. Choose the Fill tool, choose Bitmap Fill from the Info Bar drop-down. The bitmap is in the gallery now. I click to apply it to the selected border, and I'm shrinking it, but oops, I need to specify Repeat Tile here. And now you can scale and rotate this pattern, and it sure looks seamless to me. See the toppings and all their repeating glory? And if you ate these, they'd probably repeat also. This is a pretty handsome border, and I'm sure you can do better than me, and now that you know the steps, you can create any type of tile, any shape, any theme. As a bonus, let me show you a bitmap pattern that doesn't tile, but there's a Zara feature that can force it to tile. Let's consider the bitmap on the page as the full size of the graphic you want to repeat. You choose the tile with the fill tool, and then on the info bar you choose repeat inverted. You get a kaleidoscopic effect, and the edges mirror. You can scale and rotate the interior of the shape, and it will never show a seam. So happy repetition to you, until next time at... Mm -hmm.